Hello again and welcome to the Prince Magnum channel. This is going to be another episode of In Your Face. Today we're going to be talking about the old cars again. Um, but not just specifically about the old cars in general. We're just going to be talking about the fact that many young adults, uh, when they think of an old car, they automatically think of the muscle cars. Well, I'm going to have to burst that bubble again. Uh, not all the old cars were muscle cars. Uh, in some of the last videos, we talked about how car companies have been and our government has been involved with the propaganda effort to get us to believe that cars all the way up until 1980 was muscle cars. Well, that's not true. Um, and not all of the cars in the muscle car era were muscle cars. Uh, let me explain. Um, in 1964, uh, GM, uh, GM brass had put down, you know, because big blocks were now the new thing, uh, like Chevrolet's 409 and the Pontiac's 389 and so on and so on. You get the idea. Well, General Motors got the idea that uh, no big blocks should ever make it into their mid-sized cars. Well, Pontiac, uh, the people who headed Pontiac was like, well, that just sucks. So they got the idea that they were going to offer a performance package with the Le Mans or the Tempest. And most people tend to forget about the Le Mans and Tempest. They automatically think of the car I'm about to mention. They offered it under the GTO package and, you know, for the Le Mans or Tempest. Right there, you actually see that uh, little tidbit. And uh, they were able to kind of get under the radar for a little while with GM uh, uh, the heads of GM caught on, but by then, the demand for the uh, the very first muscle car was in, and we started building them. Um, un but to uh, you know, to clear the air on this, uh, the Le Mans and the Tempest. I mean, they had good and powerful engines, but I wouldn't classify those as real muscle cars unless you got a muscle car engine. Uh, how did you define a muscle car? Well, it was real easy because all the car companies uh, made mid-sized cars, but not all of them came with big engines. Um, for example, in 1964, you could get a, a Chevelle with, you know, four-door with a 283 that didn't generate more than maybe 250 horses. And I wouldn't dare classify that as muscle car. Um, you know... Uh, the Mustangs, uh, they came out with inline uh, 200s, and uh, that doesn't exactly qualify as muscle car. Um, you know, you guys get the, are starting to get the idea. Um, what classified a muscle car? Well, that's, that's generally, usually it was a midsize, full-size, compact, it didn't matter, uh, that had an engine in it that generated more power than that car actually needed. To, to perform an everyday everyday task. Uh, what's a general rule of thumb? I would say anything um, above 250 horses that was a V8. Uh, now the V8 in question could be a small block or a big block, but it had to generate more power than the vehicle actually needed. And in most cases, 250 horses uh, was more than enough to propel a vehicle along at a reasonable speed and keep up with traffic even today. So back then we knew full well that these cars just had to generate an awful lot of power. Um, but you know, uh, the Chevelle Super Sports are sought after, the Malibu Su Super Sports are sought after, they just had a tremendous amount of power. Uh, you know, uh, most people tend to forget about the, uh, the Ford Falcons and things like that and these cars were awesome for their day they were amazing you know if you got the big engines in them they were very very powerful um you know uh but most uh, but well like the nova the nova is a very popular muscle car but all the way up until 1970 you can get a four-cylinder in the nova just something to think about so not all the old cars were muscle cars um so that myth had to be dispelled at some point and it's just a crying shame it took a guy like me to actually come out and say it. Uh, not all the old cars were muscle cars. And not all the muscle car engines were muscle. Uh, for example, in 1969, the 327 had, uh, you could still get them in Impalas, but by that time, 
Uh, they came with two barrel carburetors and were just a shadow of their former selves. I think they were only generating right around 200 horses uh, because they were being phased out. And you could still get the, you know, a high end 327 in Corvette at that time, but, you know, it's just one of those things. Most people don't realize these things. So 1969 was the last year for the 327. Um, once again, you know, I'm more of a GM guy, so that's what I'm going to use mostly, uh, even though we still have Project Spirit and we're loving her to pieces. Um, so, yeah, just kind of a heads up on that. You know, if you're out there, uh, you know, just because you see an old car doesn't necessarily mean it's a muscle car. And, um, and if you look at the horsepower numbers that are actually printed uh, for some vehicles all the way up until 1975, uh, you'll actually see horsepower levels dropping dramatically. Uh, let me give you a finer example. Uh, in 1970, the, the 70 Chevelle Super Sport with the LS6 generated uh, 450 horses. That's an awesome, powerful machine. But in 1971, the horsepower level started dipping. The LS6 only put out 425, which the previous year, the LS5 was the one that put out 425 instead of the LS6. Um, so horsepower levels were already dropping in 71. Um, but officially in the history books, it, it's, you know, for those that are not trying to rewrite history, the... The last official year for the muscle car was 1970, but if you were to twist my arm, I would say all the way up until 75. Um, also, for the record, uh, the Maverick sometimes gets thrown into that muscle car status. The Maverick is not a muscle car. Even the Grabbers were just, uh, or the, or even the Maverick GTs that that came about later on. Those those were definitely not. I wouldn't even classify those as muscle cars. They came out with V8s, but in most cases, they were two-barrel carbureted. That was an economy compact of the 70s. And uh, oftentimes, we tend to forget that um, if we wanted to have muscle, we had to build it in in a lot of vehicles. Um, even the Mustangs in the 1970s, I think around 75 horsepower levels, uh, even with the 302, 5.0 for you young ones, uh, the 302 had dipped to like 172 horses in, at, at some point. It was, it, was, it was just horrible. But we did get our fuel economy. Um, so that brings us to, you know, uh, to clearing up that air. Um, not all of them were muscle cars. Um, as a matter of fact, if you would even like a, a, one of those obscure fun facts, um, in 78, 79, and 80, uh, Chevrolet offered the, uh, a version of the Camaro uh, for women called the Berlin Netta, uh, which was really interesting because it had the same suspension setup as a Z28 of its day, but it came out with a really anemic 305. Uh, how do I know about this car? I actually had a 70, uh, a 78 version, which was kind of a rare car because there wasn't that many made that year. But it was considered the woman's, uh, the woman's Camaro because she still had a, a kind of a peppy V8, I guess you could say. And it came out with a sporty suspension and, uh, and it did come with a 350 turbo automatic. So if you find that fascinating, uh, most definitely that would be t something to kind of look at. Okay, uh, once again, you know, we're at that stage where um, I'm going to clue you in on a few things. Uh, uh, more fun facts uh, that I had to actually sit down. I actually had to look up a few things that I had forgotten on, uh, on some of these fun facts. Um, and, uh, you know, doing these slideshows are a lot of fun because uh, you never know what information is going to come out. And uh, it, if you, you know, once again, if you don't like my voice, turn it down take in the fun facts uh, I will say that I did make these slides a little longer uh, because well I'm running out of fun facts I'm gonna actually have to start looking things up <coughs> for these videos I'm gonna actually have to start looking things up uh, but yeah um, so you know if you enjoy this please please hit that like button on these hit the subscribe button um, I enjoy making videos for you all. Um, there's also going to be an up-and-coming, uh, uh, in-your-face um, 
basically, uh, and it's going to be fail videos. Um, and I'm even going to be making fun of myself in said fail video. Um, we're also going to have a, um, very soon, we're also going to have a, a um, kind of a, a challenge for all of you who've been hitting up my video on, uh, on the life hacks. Um, we'll get into that more in another video, but there's going to be a serious, serious challenge for all of you who enjoyed the life hack video. Um, last I looked, which was just yesterday, we are actually uh, winding down to that thousand view marker, which is really exciting. Uh, that really stokes, uh, stokes me up. But um, if you want more life hacks, get ready. There's going to be a video that's going to talk about if you want more life hacks um, about getting better at fuel economy. Um, I think we're in for a real, real exciting time on that one. So, uh, yeah, there we are again. Um, you know, so, um, I'm really also really kind of shocked that, um, that my videos on, uh, on surviving romance have not been moving as much as they should, I, that I feel they should. Uh, it just seems like, uh, it seems like y'all really want the, the simple, cheap, real easy budget stuff that a lot of people are afraid to actually turn a uh, turn a wrench big time on their vehicles um, so we'll talk more about that in a later video all right uh, that brings us to the end of this video um, like I said hit the like button hit the subscribe button please do this I want to be doing this more I want to I want to make a living doing this I'm tired of doing what I'm doing you know let's do this for real um and that and if you will the last thing needs to be said if nobody has told you that they love you prince magnum does god bless you and have a happy 24 thank you